Okay, speed here, still at the bottom of the helix. Our next presenter, Ron Marsh from El Dorado Springs, Missouri, is probably the world's most watched in scaler on YouTube, just shy of 26,000 subscribers. I was hoping we would get a behind the scenes tour of his layout tonight, but I'm pretty sure he put all the tools and watch loss already away. Ron, we are all curious to see your layout. Go for it. All right. Thank you, Speed. I appreciate that very much. And uh, I want to welcome you all to the Texas, Colorado and Western Railway, uh, which is my depiction basically of the BNSF Wichita Falls subdivision uh, in 2008. Uh, and I thought I'd start off just by kind of giving you a little bit of background uh, and then I'll show you around the, the layout itself. Uh, as far as why I model what I model and uh, uh, how I how I came to that. I actually started off as a, as a kid. I was a, a Mopac fan, grew up along the Missouri Pacific in the 70s and 80s. And so I initially was a Missouri Pacific modeler, first in HO scale and, and then an N scale. Uh, when BNSF uh, merger took place in the, in the early 90s, uh, I lived for uh, several years in a couple of, of BNSF towns and was really fascinated by just the variety of paint schemes, all of those patches and merger schemes and and uh, really, really fascinated me. And then I lived for six years in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and drove every day uh, to work through Saginaw, Texas. And every day that I drove through Saginaw, I just thought this is a place that begs to be modeled. And uh, so I, um, whenever I built my next layout after I moved from Texas back home to, to Missouri, uh, I built uh, a, a, a version of the Texas, Colorado, and Western, uh, and uh, we we moved, and so that one came down, and 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 this one came up. This is my my latest version. Um, so that kind of gives you a little bit of background of why I modeled BNSF and why I modeled this particular era, uh, area uh, and era, which was uh, the kind of the era w when I was uh, living there in the in the Metroplex. Um, the Wichita Falls sub, which is the basis for uh, my layout. Uh, runs from uh, uh, Fort Worth, Texas, up to uh, to Amarillo through Wichita Falls, uh, and so pieces of of that line are kind of the basis for for most of my layout. And, and there is some 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 fictional stuff as well uh, that was uh, kind of part of the deal for getting real estate for my layout. My layout actually shares space in the basement with my family's family room, a place where my kids play video games is right, right next to the layout. And uh, which, which actually is, is, is kind of a, a fun concept because it means that I can work on the layout while the family is doing things in the family room. We can kind of be together that way. And, and uh, so anyway, en enough talk about that. Uh, I'm going to now there's going to be some camera movement to this tonight. I just don't know any other way to get around the layout, uh, but I'm going to try to minimize that as much as I can. And I'm going to warn you each time before I move the camera. I don't want to make anybody motion sick if I can, if I if I keep from it. So uh, I'm going to move the camera right now. Uh, so just really quickly from uh, one tripod down to the next. And um, we're going to start right over here and now i'll tell you a little first about the part of the layout that i can't show you just because i can't get camera gear there uh, what you're looking at here uh, over in the corner is uh, the, the lower level of, of my layout and the far end over there i think you could probably see the hole ahead of those uh, couple of locomotives um, the layout goes through uh, into the next room which is actually our laundry room and I have a, a, a staging yard back there on each end. My layout functions as a point-to-point -point railroad. And uh, on each level, there is an, an eight-track staging yard with an auto-reversing uh, balloon track and also a, a passing siding. Uh, that, that allows me plenty of, of storage space for staging trains for, for operations. Uh, the balloon track actually allows operators, whenever they take a train into staging, to go ahead and run a, around that reversing loop and uh, have the, the trains already staged for, for their next trip on, on the next session. Uh, and that it, it works really, really well. There's nothing spectacular to see there, and I can't get the camera in that, that far anyway. Um, 
We start here as we come out of staging on the east end of the layout. And uh, this uh, uh, work in progress here is, is uh, my depiction of uh, Fort Worth, Texas. And again, I, it, it has a long way to go there, but but uh, working on a number of skyscrapers and uh, hope to get a couple of signature structures in, in here as well. Um, this uh, line where you see this uh, this uh, unit grain train sitting uh, at the moment is, is the main line. Uh, behind it, is uh, is downtown yard, which on my layout is actually an interchange yard for interchange traffic between BNSF uh, and the Union Pacific. Those cross uh, in this area. In fact, where this goes into staging would be just uh, probably feet away from the you know very famous Tower 55 at the Diamonds, where BNSF and, and Union Pacific uh, uh, cross there. And uh, and this is not far from from a very large Union Pacific yard. Uh, so we have uh, have the interchange uh, there. Uh, this track here in the front uh, is where uh, my my one passenger train that that runs on my layout uh, will come into the to the uh, Fort Worth uh, Union Passenger Station, uh, which is a very modern station. And then I also have one one industry track off of uh, here in the back that runs to uh, a plywood company uh, here on the front. I, I've I've of course been working this area off and on for a long time building this kind of downtown scenery uh, or downtown structures is a challenge in in scale uh, just because there are not a lot of modern skyscraper types of kits available uh, so you know I've got a few kits there that I have kind of cut up and and uh, kit bashed a little bit and you see I've, I've played a little bit with with making a few kind of nondescript skyscrapers uh, out of acrylic, out of, out of plexiglass, and we're, we're kind of still working on that process. Ultimately, we'll have a photo backdrop here too that'll that'll give you more of that, uh, more of that Fort Worth skyline. Um, gonna swing on around here, and I'm gonna try to watch here and make sure that I get enough zoom that you can really see what's going on um, as we swing around. From from this area where Fort Worth is over here, we swing out into a real short peninsula. It's actually just a little six foot peninsula, but adds some 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 running space to to my layout. And uh, we come up and uh, make sure I get the camera turned around far enough. Here we we come across uh, the, the Trinity River, uh, and where BNSF crosses the Trinity River, there actually are three bridges there. Uh, I've only got two, but and 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 these kind of function differently than, than those three do. Um, in this case, you know, my main line crosses this bridge in the foreground. The bridge in the background, uh, which uh, on the prototype would probably be uh, the Union Pacific main line uh, for the, uh, I believe it's the Duncan subdivision. In this case, that actually is the, the, the kind of the tail end of the yard lead off of North Yard, which we're going to see as we swing around to, uh, to the other side of the layout. Um, and in fact, we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to just going to warn you again here. We're going to move the camera one more time. Um, here, you kind of get the the end of this peninsula, and we're just going to kind of swing by it because there's not a lot on it on the lower level. There's more on the upper level when we get up there a little bit. Again, I apologize for <laughs> all the movement here. And then we come down here to. Uh, to North Yard, and people who've watched my my videos on uh, on uh, my YouTube channel have have seen North Yard quite a bit, uh, and we're, we'll move on down the yard in a little bit as we go. But North Yard really is kind of the heart of the operations on on my layout. Uh, North Yard in in Saginaw, and by the way, Saginaw is a suburb on the north side of Fort Worth. Uh, and North Yard actually kind of reaches down into uh, Fort Worth, but uh, actually is 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 maintained as the property of of, of Saginaw, Texas. Uh, and for BNSF, uh, North Yard is uh, kind of a, a a regional yard that, that serves uh, for switching for a, a number of, of of regional industries and interchange and such. Uh, the the original line. <clears throat> that was built on the prototype that that I model from uh, <clears throat> from Saginaw all the way up to Wichita Falls, Texas, uh, was built by the Fort Worth and, and Denver uh, back in the 19th century, and it started at a little place called Hodge Junction. Which I'll back my camera up just a little more here, turn it down right here in the foreground. 
uh, is uh, just a little piece of Hodge Yard. Uh, and today, Hodge Yard, uh, Hodge Junction is actually owned by the Fort Worth and Western Railroad, and, uh, and, and they interchange as well. So I have a connection here and, and just a, a few short tracks to be able to do some interchange with the Fort Worth and Western. And for those of you who might be fans of the Fort Worth and Western, you'll see the one custom painted and detailed uh, Fort Worth and Western locomotive here in the front that, that I did uh, a, a few years ago. Um, but North Yard, uh, again, is kind of the, the heart of, of my layouts operation. You'll see as we go down, I have a number of industries uh, along the back of, of uh, North Yard, and all but one of those are, are actually prototypical to, to the area. Um, Prototypical North Yard, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was a 24-track um, uh, uh, yard. Um, in my case, I uh, am running six classification tracks. It's it's a stub-ended yard on my layout, but the arrival and departure tracks are double-ended, so it can be accessed. The yard can be accessed from either end, uh, but uh, I only switch it from one end. On my previous layout, I actually had it a, a double-ended yard that you could switch from each end. Uh, but I found that I didn't really use the, 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 uh, the switching lead on the, on the West end. So in this case, I just saved myself a few turnouts and a little bit of space by, uh, by putting all of the switching up on this end. And as, as we come around here, of course, here you, you see the main line, uh, this, what looks like a secondary main line here is actually the yard lead, the switching lead for, for, um, for North Yard, and I uh, got one of my two primary passing sightings here at North Yard, and it, it's long enough to allow two uh, 20 20 plus car trains with two locomotives to be able to to pass each other here. Uh, so got got plenty of capacity there for for the, the for the for the layout. Uh, Looking at the industries, of course, up here on the end, we have kind of the, uh, the, the, the basic service facilities for the yard itself. And, and, and this is all scratch built. Uh, the, the North Yard Tower, and if anybody's familiar with North Yard, this is selectively compressed a little bit, but a but, uh, uh, pretty fair representation of, of what that yard tower and, and office looked like at North Yard. Uh, I've got a RIP um, facility or mechanical facility here, and of course, my um, sanding and, and fuel facilities and, and track. Uh, back here along the back, uh, you, you'll see Atterbury Grain. W one of my favorite things to model uh, you know, is where um, where the farm meets the rails. I, I grew up on a farm in West Central Missouri, and actually some of my earliest interactions with the railroad were unloading uh, sacked livestock feed and supplements off of boxcars on a team track onto a, onto a truck. And uh, so that's kind of where I got my introduction in, into uh, the, the, the interest and fascination with the railroad was uh, feed mills and grain elevators and places like that. So I, I love those. Um, one of the things that drew me to the Saginaw area is the fact that it has several very, very large uh, grain elevators, uh, which if, if you drive down I-35 going south into, into Fort Worth on the north side, uh, you look off to the uh, look off to the west, and you can't miss them. There are two very large grain elevators and a big feed mill there. That uh, at one time one of those was the largest uh, grain elevator under one leg in the world. Uh, so you know, very very large facilities, and uh, I. Wish that I had room to to really do them justice, but but I do uh, I do my best. A Atterbury Grain uh, sits here uh, off of the, uh, uh, the the south end, the southeast end of of North Yard, uh, and this is a scratch built uh, grain elevator here. And I, I I worked on it for a long time, and and pretty pretty pleased with the way it came out. I think a pretty good uh, again compressed, but a pretty good representation of of that. Uh, that elevator in North Yard. We're going to move the camera on down here a little bit so you can actually get a decent view of everything that we have here. Um, next to Atterbury Grain, 
Uh, I'm still in the process of, of scratch building uh, what is actually uh, Victory Blue, uh, it, which is a subsidiary of a company called Victory Fuels, and they make diesel exhaust fluid. Uh, but the interesting thing about this uh, structure, uh, the, the prototype, it was originally a, a feed processing facility. So it has this ele a grain elevator, uh, actually has an external leg, which I haven't put on yet, and, and some, some bins that were used for, uh, for processing feed from, from grain. Uh, it was purchased by uh, Victory Blue, and and now uh, they receive uh, urea, pelleted urea, and uh, ionized water in tank cars, and produce uh, diesel exhaust fluid. So uh, so working on scratch building that structure, and obviously it still has a ways to go. In fact, these couple of tracks that are here are just actually laying in place. The rest of this is all permanent. Uh, those are just kind of set in place until we actually get that. Uh, that, that structure uh, built. The next structure we, we see down here, um, and this is actually a, a, a hydrocal kit. And uh, I, I built it because I need something to really fill some space here along North Yard. And uh, I have changed my mind four or five times about what it's going to be. And I still don't know other than it's a large warehouse. Uh, that's the one thing that's not really prototypical here to North Yard. That's that was a, an add on that I put in there again, literally because I need something to kind of to kind of fill some space. Um, arr, we'll keep on moving down here uh, and I'm going to reach a limit as to how far I can go just because of my equipment. But uh, we'll go as far as we can. Um, the next, I think I can zoom in here just a little bit. That next structure that you see here, this white structure, uh, p and Cold Logistics, uh, which is a, 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 a cold uh, cold storage facility for 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 uh, you know food, and then uh, on down from it, you see uh, Evergreen Feed, which produces uh, again feed from. Uh, mi mixed feed, ground mixed feed for livestock from, from grain. And then way down there in the corner, at kind of the reaches, uh, the vast reaches of what you can see. Let's see if I can zoom in just a little more here. Uh, down there in the very corner, you're going to see Universal Forest Products. And uh, Universal right here is a, a, a large uh, lumber and, um, uh, and, and hardware distribution facility so they receive lumber on in uh, center beam flat cars and and other kinds of hardware and box cars and then it's distributed by truck from there to uh, lumber yards and hardware stores and such uh, across the across the metroplex now i've kind of showed you the the industries along your north yard let me show you a little more about its its uh, functionality um, i'm going to turn just turn the camera back here uh, to the other end of North Yard one more time. You kind of get a view of it from the other side that way. And uh, yeah, that's not bad right there. Again, back up here, we, we have we have, uh, we have have Atterbury Grain. Uh, up here, we, of course, we, we have our, our um, locomotive servicing uh, facility here, uh, a couple of, of RIP tracks. So one of the things that I actually model on my layout is, uh, is RIP service. Uh, I, I have a, a way of uh, uh, operators as they're coming through a couple of points that they will draw a card that periodically will tell them that they have a, uh, a bad order car, a hot box, something along those lines on in their train. It'll tell them which car it is. And if that's the case, as they get here, that that, that car will be pulled out of their train, will be brought to uh, uh, to the uh, the service facility here, uh, and then will be forwarded back out in the next session. Um, thoroughfare track, which just allows you know run around uh, uh, through the yard without interfering with the the yard ladder, and then of course the yard ladder here. Uh, I have a double arrival and departure track, so I can literally have one train arriving and one train departing at the same time. And, and again, these are double-ended, so these will access the main from either end of the yard, and they do so without interfering with the, uh, the yard ladder. So uh, the, the yard master, as he's uh, working the switcher on the, the yard lead, uh, should never have to stop his work be because somebody is needing to move through the yard or somebody's needing to enter and exit the yard. Uh, those it's designed specifically to allow that function to to keep working without um, without interference from uh, trains coming in or um, 
uh, or locomotives being moved around the 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 yard or or switching in in the in the background. Uh, as far as North Yard is concerned, now again, this is this is kind of a regional yard, and so uh, there are no long distance trains that that uh, originate or terminate here. Uh, cars are dropped off and picked up in blocks uh, from manifest trains that, as they run uh, through here, uh, both east and west, going from staging to staging. That uh, all the trains that run out of North Yard are are locals. Uh, there are several locals that run out of North Yard. Of course, there obviously there's a local that switches uh, the industries along North Yard itself. There's a local that switches Saginaw, which you'll see here in just a moment. And then uh, there is a local uh, that I call the Wichita Falls Turn, which, uh, which uh, serves a, a couple of towns up on the, uh, the upper deck uh, that we'll see in, uh, in, in just, a, uh, just a little bit as well. Um, okay, I'm going to try to get, I think I've gotten just about all the length I can get out of my camera cord here, so I apologize for that. I'm going to turn this, and I'm also going to zoom for you, because I want to do the best I can to show you Saginaw, Texas, which is down there. Do I have any more zoom? That may be all the zoom that I have, um, but I'll go down here and, and show you what I can. Um, those of you, again, who follow my, my YouTube channel know you probably saw me a year or so ago building this scene. I'm still working on a lot of scenery on the layout. Obviously, it, it, that is a work of progress. Uh, but but this highway, which is uh, which is Loop 820, uh, as it crosses over the uh, the main here through uh, through Saginaw, um, scratch belt the highway, the kit bash the, uh, the 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 two overpasses. Uh, but here in Saginaw, we have uh, we have a few industries. Uh, I, again, as I told you, when I lived there and drove through Saginaw every day, I just thought it was a city that kind of begged to be modeled. I wish I had more space because there is so much more to Saginaw that that could be modeled. Um, this is not actually a, a serviced industry, but this large grain elevator, I, I couldn't build Saginaw without at least representing one of those uh, elevators. And of course, this is so selectively compressed that it doesn't actually even begin to give you the, a sense of how big the, the prototype elevators are. Uh, this is about a fourth of the length of what they would be if, if I built them fully to scale. Um, but the, the industries that are served here are, are Coke uh, Industries, which uh, receives primarily asphalt, uh, comes from the refineries down uh, around Galveston, and uh, comes to be, to be used here in, in industry. There's also a quality carriers plant, which is a transloading facility for uh, both uh, liquid and dry uh, food goods from, uh, from rail to, to truck. Uh, and then... Way over here in the corner, what you can just barely see, is a very truncated version uh, of an industry that I didn't really have space for, but I couldn't completely leave off the layout. And that is uh, Trinity Industries has a facility here that, uh, at least in the time that I model, uh, they built uh, air slide covered hoppers. And so uh, I've uh, actually got one undecorated uh, Trinity air, uh, uh, air slide covered hopper there that I plan to paint as if it were bare metal ready to go into the paint shop, uh, which will stay there. And then they will uh, receive uh, uh, certain, certain, certain parts uh, and then also periodically will ship out new uh, Trinity covered hoppers, which I have some of those on the layout to, uh, to show. And I'm going to turn this just a little bit more because we're basically at the lower end or the far end of the, the layout, but I just want to get you a little piece of uh, my Helix. Um, now, I know not everyone is a fan of helices. Is that the right word? Helix, uh, he plural helix, any helix. Um, and and I, I understand why. I, I know the, the limitations that they offer and the problems that they, that they have. In my case, however, I... Um, you know, I had a, a limited amount of space and uh, a large imagination as to what I wanted to build. So uh, two decks was uh, a must. And I uh, also obviously wanted to build uh, grain elevators on the lower deck. So I needed a, 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 a serious amount of headspace on the lower level. Uh, thus, in order to make that happen, A, I, I lowered the lower level down a little lower than I would like to have it. It's actually at about 36 inches, uh, and the upper level is at, is at uh, 
is at 60. Uh, so I actually have a full 18 inches of headspace between the lower deck and the bottom of the fascia down here. Uh, and, but in order to get that, I had to build a nine and uh, nine and a half turn helix, uh, which sounds a little bit crazy. And, uh, it kind of is, um, one of the drawbacks that people have with, with a helix is the fact that, you know, it's a long time not to see your train. Uh, obviously, I solved that problem just by not enclosing the helix. In fact, if I were to show you the whole family room, you would realize that the helix is actually kind of the center point of the entire room, sits right next to our television. So if you come in and you sit in our family room, uh, you get a very nice view all the time of my of my open helix. Um, but I, I, I built it very carefully as I built it. And I am proud to say that uh, for all the problems that a helix can cause, uh, this one runs very well. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with the way that it runs. Um, the, 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 the drawback to it, of course, is the fact, uh, maybe it's a plus, maybe it's a minus. It, it adds length of run between uh, Saginaw and Wichita Falls. In reality, there's about 100 miles between uh, uh, Saginaw and Wichita Falls. In my case, there's about 100 feet of main line inside of that helix. So it does at least add time uh, and, uh, and uh, in between those two, those two locations that I couldn't have created with, uh, with the length of run because of the limitations of the room. Um, okay, and with that, I'm going to move the camera one more time. We're actually going to trade Tri uh, tripods and I'm going to get you up here and let you take a look at the at the upper deck um, all right again I apologize for all of the bouncing around but we're just going to do the best that we can and also I know the first part of this is going to be hard for you to see but I'm just I'm going to do the best that I possibly can Okay, uh, as you come up to the top of the helix, and I'll walk back over here uh, for you as well. You come out of the helix here, uh, you come into the little town of, of Bowie, Texas. Uh, and again, with my space limitations, Bowie, Texas is far, far too close to, uh, to, to Wichita Falls. Uh, that is unfortunate, but it, it, it is what it is. I, I, I chose to, to model Bowie, Texas, primarily because uh, it is, uh, even today, one of the few small towns that still has a couple of very small industries that receive rail traffic, uh, single boxcar loads of traffic. And they're both along the front edge here. Uh, this uh, little scratch built business here is uh, Baron Brothers uh, Feed and Seed or, or Farm and Garden. Uh, and uh, it's still today, as small as it is now, this is a little bit compressed, but it, it's a small industry, uh, still receives uh, a sacked uh, feed and seed by boxcar. Uh, and then next to it is a, a, a business called Midwestern Mud, which is a, a regional business that serves the, the, the oil fields um, with uh, viscosifiers and some other things that I don't fully understand. Uh, but uh, this is, a, this is a kind of a regional warehouse where those uh, products are stored for use uh, in, the, in the oil industry around the area. And so it also receives boxcars that are unloaded outdoors uh, on a, a, a loading ramp, which is back behind the structure here. Uh, and then those things are, are warehoused inside of this uh, small warehouse facility. I, I, I'm was fortunate as I started modeling this area. Uh, by the time I started modeling, of course, I had moved from Texas back to, to Missouri. Uh, but through some internet groups, I uh, was able to make friends with uh, Doug Andreessen. And Doug, he, he's a friend of mine on Facebook. He may actually be watching this. If so, hello, Doug. Uh, I, I have to give a shout out to Doug because Doug is from Bowie, Texas. Uh, that's his hometown. He lives uh, north of Dallas now. But Doug was able to supply me as I needed them with tons of great photographs of, of structures and things uh, around Bowie to kind of fill in things that I hadn't gotten photos of at the time when I lived there, as well as uh, got some photos from around North Yard. He also happens to be a big fan of the uh, the old um, um, 
uh, Fort Worth and Denver route. And so it was able to help me get a, collect a lot of information about the line and uh, industries along the line as well. Uh, so Bowie, is, is, uh, is, again, serves those two industries. I also have a, a fictional uh, propane dealer here in, in Bowie, uh, just to add a little more switching, a little more interest. Um, the type of industry that would not be uncommon in in a uh, a town like this, and it, it receives uh, tank cars full of uh, full of LPG. Then, uh, as we move on around, and I'll turn our camera back here again, uh, we come into Wichita Falls, Texas. And again, I am sorry that I can't get my camera up there a little closer, but I'm at the fullest extent of my uh, of my cables here. Um, but uh, in Saginaw, we have the second of my, my passing sidings here. Uh, so the second track here is the main. The one on the outside is the passing siding. Again, I've got enough siding here to be able to allow two 20-plus uh, car trains, uh, uh, depending on the cars, up to, up to 22 cars and two locomotives can actually pass each other here. Uh, which is uh, which is not bad in uh, in, in, in in scale and in a layout this size. Um, several industries here in Wichita Falls, and this is actually a really really fun job if you're working on the layout because the uh, the Wichita Wichita Falls turn uh, originates in in North Yard, goes up the Helix, uh, actually switches buoy on its way through into Wichita Falls. And then uh, I have not, not really a switching puzzle, but there's some interesting maneuvers that are necessary to get from the uh, arrival track or the classification tracks back into the industries. And we have both facing point and trailing point uh, industries here in, uh, in uh, Wichita Falls. Uh, I, again, I'm still working on, on scenery for Wichita Falls uh, as far as structures and, and, and such. And I've got several in the works, but the first one that I built that I thought just absolutely had to be built, uh, if you've ever been to or are familiar at all with Wichita Falls, you're familiar with the old Holt Hotel. Uh, and uh, I, I kit bashed this version of the Holt Hotel from uh, uh, about four or five uh, DPM Hilltown Hotel kits, as well as some modular wall sections from uh, uh, from from DPM, and uh, that structure. If we uh, if we were to turn it on and turn off the lights, it actually has several rooms that are that are detailed and lit, and I, I, I'm I'm pretty proud of it. It's a pretty good representation of this uh, of, of this uh, old hotel, which has been a, a landmark in Wichita Falls for over a hundred years. Uh, today it's it, it is apartments and uh, anyway I'm I'm really glad to have that. As far as uh, operations around Wichita Falls, uh, several industries far way down at the very far end, uh, you'll see uh, my version of Wichita Tool and Die. Uh, I plan to to scratch build a structure for that. Actually, I think I got the camera where you can't quite see it. There it is, all the way back over here. Now now this is actually a stand-in structure. Uh, the, the actual Wichita tool and die is a, is a corrugated metal structure and it looks very different from that. This is just something that I had that I used as a stand-in temporarily until I get to there. Um, Dorchester grain here along the back. Again, I love grain elevators. This is a small grain elevator that actually sits along uh, Wichita Falls. The Wichita Falls also has an actual functioning team track. And the one uh, thing that I know is uh, is uh, uh, switched out uh, uh, regularly on that team track is lumber. It's from a local lumber yard, and so uh, I uh, I keep got a friend here. I I I, I switch uh, uh, lumber loads in and out of here on a pretty regular basis, and and some 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 others as well. Uh, the one of the great things about team tracks and interchange tracks is the fact that they make fantastic uh, universal industries. You can switch anything in and out of a team track pretty much in the same way with uh, with an interchange. And so I'm, I'm glad to have plenty of both on my layout. Uh, up here at uh, at the, uh, the west end, as I'll turn my camera back a little to where I had it, um, up here at the west end, uh, we have Bell Processing, which is a large uh, scrap dealer and, and ships gondolas full of, of, of scrap metal. Uh, and then back here in the back uh, at uh, Wichita Falls, the, uh, the, the BNSF interchanges with a, a, a short line known as the Wichita Tillman and Jackson. 
Uh, and at one time, this was originally an MKT line. And so I refer to this yard, which is an actual proto prototype yard. Uh, I refer to it as Katie Yard. Uh, but it, you know, my layout, it is just an interchange yard. It's got, it's got uh, three tracks plus an engine servicing track. Uh, so I can actually, uh, actually interchange up to about 20 or 20, 20 to 22 cars, depending on, uh, on what cars they are. Uh, and, and this short line serves industries for a hundred plus miles, uh, up in through North Texas into, into Oklahoma. And so virtually anything could be switched in and out of this yard prototypically, uh, as it serves, uh, farm industry serves grain elevators. There's a, there's a glass, uh, uh, fiberglass plant. And uh, I think also a glass products plant, uh, up North of uh, Wichita falls, uh, along the Wichita Tillman and Jackson, and just all, all kinds of great, uh, of great industries, uh, along there from, from this point, as we pass Wichita, uh, Wichita falls, then we get into the more freelance part of the layout. Um, I told you as I started that I had to do a little bit of negotiation with my family as I built the layout. And primarily what that amounted to was my wife told me, if you're going to put this layout uh, in our family room, you've got to build some some mountain scenery. We're, we're people who love the mountains. We love to go to Colorado, Wyoming. And she's like, I, I want to see some mountain scenery. Well, um, you know, BNSF, as it goes from Wichita Falls, the, the Transcon would take it through through. New Mexico, Southern Colorado. And so you would get mountain scenery, but not exactly the kind of mountain scenery she was looking for. So, uh, so the scenery that we get and locations we get on from here are going to be, uh, uh, are going to be completely, <laughs> completely fictitious. Uh, I'm going to turn the camera here a bit and I think I can probably, sorry, zoom out just a little bit here. Um, maybe I can. There it goes. Okay. Uh, just out of uh, Wichita Falls, of course, we cross the Wichita River. And uh, this area is, is, is almost ready for me to actually pour some water and get, get that scenery uh, going there. And, and uh, also, you kind of see up in the background there, uh, again, those of you who follow my YouTube channel recently saw me do a... Um, a video on using forced perspective and uh, talked about this particular scene, the little church back there in the background, which is actually a Z scale structure uh, to add uh, a sense of, of distance there. Uh, and then we, we start getting into, uh, into mountain scenery. Um, now, this scenery is more complete as we get around to the other side of the layout. But, but uh, here, we, of course, we've got the railroad going across a, a bridge with an underpass. And if you look way back in there, this, this highway uh, actually goes uh, into, into a tunnel uh, uh, further back, way back in there. And that's one of those, one of those parts of the layout that as you're running the layout, you might not notice, but then as you get to kind of really looking after a session is over and you realize, Oh, wow, there's a whole scene back in there that I uh, couldn't see when I was operating, but uh, uh, is, uh, is fun and interesting and, and, uh, and pretty cool. So, um, I'm going to keep, I'm just going to keep sliding this, this, this on down here. Um, and I probably need to zoom out again too. There's my light. <laughs> um, then as we get into, uh, in, in, into the more, more mountainous scenery, uh, you know, I just, I, I call this particular formation, uh, you know, Rocky Mount because I don't have any <laughs> better name for it or prototypical, typical name for it. Tons and tons of, and this is all cast plaster, uh, uh rocks that I have on here. A lot of people, you know, talk about saving weight. Uh, uh, saving weight was not a concern of mine apparently. Cause I, I have put, uh, uh, well, at least at least a hundred pounds of, of plaster through the rest of this part of the layout that you're going to see. Uh, this area up here, of course, is bald at the moment. This this will actually have trees on it um, as as we get to to that part of the uh, of the layout. And I'm going to move you on down one more time. We're going to we're going to be kind of sliding around the peninsula here, so uh, you'll. Just have to forgive me for for a few a few movements. Uh, the the beauty of this part of the layout, as far as I'm concerned, is is for photography and and video, 
And as I get more and more uh, of the scenery done, of course, I, I've done some spots for the sake of being able to do some photographs. And of course, there's some more familiar parts that many of you have seen before as we get on around the peninsula here. Uh, but uh, this this kind of shelf that the, that the railroad runs on as it cuts uh, around through through this particular formation is, uh, you know, as far as operations are concerned, it doesn't serve any function whatsoever, but it's a great place just to be able to rail fan trains and take some some photographs, and, and, and I'm excited about that. Okay, moving on, moving on, moving on. We're going to get to the other side here in just a minute, and... What you all can't see is every time I move the camera, I also have to move my, my computer, and so we're doing the best that we doing the best that we can here. Here's the the end of the peninsula, uh, and uh, again, as I'm I'm actually kind of working on some of this scenery right now, uh, primarily for the fact that uh, that I want to be able to take some more photographs, and of course, some of these seams and 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 places in in the the, the rocks up here, we're going to fill that in with some greenery and and uh, some some various things that. Uh, uh, will help kind of hide and, and blend those uh, a little better um, as we get on down the line. Sorry, I got to get over a cord here. I know there's got to be a better way to do this, but we're doing the best we can here. Um, okay. And now, like I said, those of y'all who are familiar with my YouTube channel are going to start to really... Uh, see some things that look familiar to you here in the in the next uh, couple of minutes <sighs> pardon me but i'm going to, have to walk right in front of the camera <laughs> um okay and as we we get over to this side of uh that same mountainous rock formation um we get to the area that uh that i call beggars canyon on my layout and it looks like we've got something a little out of place here i'm going to fix it before i put the camera on it um there we go uh this is what i refer to as as beggars canyon those of you who are star wars fans obviously now know that i'm one too uh, that's just fun for me i i'm this is the part of my layout that i'm most excited about as far as scenery is concerned and it obviously still has a, a ways to go uh have a, i'll have a mountain stream uh right here running in the in, in the bottom uh, planning on putting a, a scene back in here, a camping scene. Uh, I've, I've, I've already built a, uh, a little Arduino uh, animated campfire that's going to go in as part of that scene. Uh, back in the backdrop back here where you see these rocks here, uh, this will be a large a waterfall. So from the top here, we'll have the waterfall back behind uh, this outcropping. And then, of course, the, uh, the stream that, that, that comes uh, all the way out. Um, also, again, those of you who uh, saw, make sure I can get up there and see it, who saw my the video that I had made about um, uh, about forced perspective, you saw this scene as well. Uh, again, this is a little outcropping. It look, looks a little weird right now because it's just kind of plastered on the side of this mountain. Uh, but I'm going to simulate a shelf road and got a little Z-scale car up there. Uh, and then once I get this covered up with trees on both sides, all you'll be able to see is that bit of that rock outcropping. And I think it's going to make a really believable, uh, convincing uh, idea that there's a shelf road there and that's a car driving up to wherever, a cabin up in the mountains or or, or whatever that might be. Uh, as we come on around here, I have uh, uh, one tunnel on the layout. We have the entrance uh, here on this side. And... Uh, comes out then over here on the other side where you see uh, Amtrak number 16 parked. Um, this is uh, this is uh, so far on my layout the the, the most fun uh, whimsical thing that I have. Uh, again, one last time, another forced perspective situation. I've got a Z scale cabin. Uh, up and you notice it's not only Z scale and it's up high, but it's actually kind of over the ridge. You can't even see the the base of the cabin. It makes it really, really believably look uh, like it's far away. And of course, I've you know, painted the mountains in the distance. Uh, but also, I don't know if you can see it on camera or not. I, but but uh, I've got my little got my little Sasquatch there, kind of. Uh, uh, wandering his way up to the cabin to see maybe what uh, what he can uh, what he can pilfer from there and finally then as we swing on around we kind of come to the 
end of the layout and back here behind my passenger train, kind of hidden by this group of trees, you see the tunnel that, uh, that leads uh, from the visible part of the layout on back to the, uh, the staging yard on the, uh, on the upper level. Uh, this was where I kind of started uh, scenery, uh, and uh, I, I have gotten distracted. You know, you know, I've got model railroad ADD, so you know, I get to working on one project, and then I shift gears to something else, and it takes me a long time to get back. So this is this is where I kind of started my scenery, and uh, I, I, I'm anxious to to get back to be able to continue. Uh, to to bring that all the way around to this mountain this section. The big drawback here is the fact that, of course, you know, trees, those trees on, on those two hills are somewhat sparsely populated. As we get to some of these other areas, I want them to be a lot thicker. And uh, what you're looking at just in that section is is over 200 pine trees. And so uh, what I'm what I'm struggling with is the motivation to sit down and make about seven or eight hundred pine trees which is something i'm going to have to do one of these days but uh, just haven't gotten it done so anyway that's uh that's kind of a, a tour of the of the layout i'm going to bring this back around so i can get in front of the camera again and um i don't know if we if we had any any uh questions or or I was comments you the five minute hits up because we have quite a few questions okay well i'm i'm ready so since there are so many questions, I'm going to ask mine first, and Michael shares the same uh, the same one. Uh, have you or do okay. you plan any uh, plan on hosting any operating sessions with visitors? Uh, yeah, I very much would 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 like to do that. Uh, the one challenge for me is the fact that I I live in a small town that is. Uh, uh, quite a ways away from from any places that have uh, a lot of r railroad community. So I know for people to come to my house to operate on my layout, probably asking for about a three hour round trip drive commitment. So uh, uh, I want to get the, the railroad to the point where it's really ready and, and even kind of do a couple of shakedowns uh, with maybe just uh, one or two people before I ask people for that uh, kind of commitment. But yes, the, the, the layout was designed for operations and to be able to have a, a small operating group, probably uh, probably a group of, uh, of, of about six uh, uh, operators to, to operate at a time. Six is enough, just let us know. <laughs> okay, will do. Someone uh, mentioned that uh, your, your grain elevator could have been the, the real size if you modeled it in Z scale. So, which do you enjoy more on the freelance part of your layout or the prototypical part? Oh, that's, that's a difficult choice to make. I enjoy both a lot. Um, uh, I think the challenge for a, a prototype layout uh, in, 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 in scale, especially is that um, you, you just don't have as much to, to, to draw from as far as kits are concerned. Um, so, you know, a, a kit that could make a really good stand in or a really good kit bash that may be readily available in HO scale sometimes can be really hard to find, especially more modern stuff uh, is really hard to find in N scale. So that's one of the challenges for for the, the prototype part, whereas the freelance part, you know, I can I can scratch build or, or kit bash whatever I want to, to, to put in there. Uh, on the other hand, I really enjoy building something that uh, somebody can come along and say, oh, I recognize that, you know, or, you know, I talk about North Yard and people are like, oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm familiar with that or I've modeled that myself mm -hmm. or, or whatever. So, so I, 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 I enjoy both of those things. Hey, DC or DCC? Uh, DCC. I'm sorry, I should have, should have mentioned that. DCC. And uh, currently uh, I am still running. I, I had the uh, MRC's Prodigy Advanced. Uh, when it first came out, uh, I, I got their system, and then when they came out with a wireless system, I upgraded a wireless. When they came out with the advanced squared, I've upgraded. You know, it's been upgraded two or three times, uh, and it, it still runs still runs pretty well for for a layout this size and in scale. I'm 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 pretty pleased with it. What software did you use for the car cards to, to create those? Say, I'm sorry, I, I didn't. You broke up what there. What software did you use to create the car cards? Uh, what soft oh what software uh my card cards are all uh, are all hand uh hand handmade handwritten uh i use the the card cards and waybills from uh from micromark and uh and have filled them all in uh by hand 
And I'll tell you, we'll tell you. I will tell you one trick that I use. I, I don't have a car card right in front of me, um, especially when people who are not used to working in scale, when they come uh, and, and operate on in scale layout, you know, one of the primary things, you know, people will say is I, I can't read those little numbers on the, uh, on the cars and that can be a challenge. So one thing that I have done with my uh, car cards is uh, I take a photograph of every piece of, of rolling stock and shrink it down onto a mailing address label uh, along with the uh, the AAR code and the reporting marks for the car and stick those right on the car card. So now you not only know the number, but you also have a visual reference that you can match up with the car. Uh, really, okay. really seems to help people out a lot. Okay, quite a few uh, Helix questions. Uh, single <laughs> okay. <or multi> -track. <laughs> Uh, single track, single track. Single track. Um, someone asked, uh, how noisy is it? Because they didn't see any cork there. Yeah, there, there is no cork on the, on the helix. Um, not, not as noisy as I was afraid it would be. Uh, it's, it's glued down with, uh, with latex caulk that the track is. And in that case, I put more uh, caulk on the, uh, under the track than I, than I would out here on the visible part of the, of the layout. Uh, and that helped to give a little bit of cushion, you know, that caulk, you know, it's always got just a little bit of a, uh, you know, rubbery con consistency to it. So it, it's not as loud as, as I was afraid it might be. And, and also, in scale locomotives, newer ones are not as loud as the the ones from fifteen or twenty years ago were. So that that helps too. So your your helix is currently open. Do you you plan to paint it or finish it in some way? Uh, I, I, I haven't I, I I haven't decided that. Uh, it, it's been there for a long time as it is, uh, and again, it's I I intend to leave it open because I don't want people to have to worry about losing their train inside of it and nobody likes climbing inside the middle of that thing. So uh, I plan to leave it open. Uh, but as far as whether I paint it or not, uh, I, it's undetermined. <laughs> then uh, what's the longest train that you can safely run on your layout? Uh, I, I typically say that, that uh, a 20 car train uh, with two locomotives is uh, is pretty well my standard max. I, I could get away with a couple more cars than that. Uh, my my unit trains. I've got several unit coal trains that basically just run the length of the layout from from staging to staging. Uh, most of those are 16 to 18 cars. Um, and then I have some other trains that are actually less cars but longer trains because they have auto racks in them. Uh, but I, between 18 and 20 is, is my is my typical standard maximum length. And uh, someone asked if uh, your peninsula is, is longer on one side or is North Yard just only six feet long? No, uh, this peninsula, the, uh, yeah, I didn't explain that very well. Uh, there's actually a corner, uh, 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 an outside corner of, of the room here. Uh, and so where the layout comes behind me, from this wall, the peninsula comes out six feet. But when it goes around to the other side, there's a 12-foot wall. So on the other side, that peninsula ends up, ends up in an 18-foot straight run, and, uh, and North Yard is on, that, is on that long straight run. Okay, same topic. Do, do you have a, a track plan that you shared somewhere? I, I, I do have, and the, the best place to find that, I actually have a Facebook page dedicated to the, the Texas, Colorado, and Western. And if you, if you search on Facebook for Texas, Colorado, and Western, you'll be able to find that. Um, and uh, I believe it's uh, at uh, TCWRY, I think is the actual the actual handle on the end of that facebook.com slash tcr tcwry but again if you search texas colorado and western anyway the track plan for both uh for both levels is is uh, on that facebook page as well as lots of pictures from the course of building it especially in the early stages and then uh final question since you have such a big interest in texas are we going to see you here in 2023 for the national convention well, I certainly hope so. I, I very much look forward to that. I lived down there the last time the convention was in St. Louis, and I drove back up here for that. So I guess it only makes sense that I would drive back <laughs> for the one that's down there. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of friends down there. I'd love to come and see again. And uh, also got some areas I'd probably like to get some more photographs of, uh, as well as the convention. So I, I very much hope so. 
Ron, thank you very, very much for your time and your beautiful layout. Thank you. You should go on to the Facebook live, um, Facebook chat and see how many compliments you got. And <laughs> I, well, I'll do that. that. No. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity and uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. Be safe. Thank you. You too.